February 15, 2024. This is the S&P 500 E-Futures Mini on the 2000 tick chart using NinjaTrader 8. There was economic data that came out at around 5.30 Pacific Standard, which is about right here where you see this big, big spike. It was, I think, the core retail sales as well as unemployment claims. And that caused kind of a big spike and then it settled itself afterwards. Overall, trading was within was range bound. And then toward the later half of the day, it kind of spiked up, consolidated, and then kind of grinded up. In the giant pre-market high and pre-market low, I thought prices were kind of trading inside the sub trading range. So even though this pre-market high and pre-market low, most of the trading, most of the price action took place here and here. So it's about, this is actually very, very tight because this is about a, you know, 50, 20 to about 50, 30. So it's about a 10 point trading range. I took a total of three trades today. I was profitable on one, but then I lost on two. So then I just had to kind of call it quits at that point and just, you know, sit on my hands and just watch the rest of the day because I try to make sure I don't trade if I take two losses because I tend to, I don't know, uh, overreact or trade on tilt and get emotional. Plus it clouds my thinking when I have two trades that I've already lost and I try to get it back or take a position size that's too big and I, I'm trying to hammer out that bad habit of mine of, you know, trying to revenge trade and get things back. So ending in a red. So I'll have to just, you know, hopefully tomorrow and the next days will be much better. So I'm going to get into the trades right now. Uh, I also want to point out that from here, I'll also draw it out again. From here, market open to about, I would say about three and a half hours. This is all the price action that took place. And then, as we've seen in the past, from about 10 Pacific Standard to about 11, this is all the price action that took place. There's kind of a big leg up and then a consolidation, but you can tell this is just one hour. And then something similar, this is from 11 to about 12. So there's two hours of trading. And then from, uh, I guess, 12 to one, it gets a little bit choppy. So definitely most of the, I think, setups were back here in the early part of the day. The pre market prices were kind of trading. Uh, it was kind of a it, well, so here's the pre market highs and pre market low. Immediately, I could tell there was more of a consolidation around this area. So I drew this blue trading range. So it spiked up and it consolidated. But this is a kind of wild consolidation. I'm trying to capture and see where most of the price action is. And as I said, this is only about nine to 10 points. So it's not that large in with respect to what we've seen in the past so i do see this down channel and i did see this as a potential fail breakout but there's no trade for me it was just something i noticed so it's a fail breakout and it's now pushing back into the trading range the first setup i saw was this failed second entry short so it's down here is the new low it's a first entry short pull back second entry short now it, although it started below it's coming from a fail breakout so it had this green channel coming down. It broke out here early on and it already tested the lows. So now I'm thinking the downtrend might've played out. The strength of the trading range might be pulling prices back in. And when I saw this failure, it's a pretty decently good failure. It's a strong engulfing candle of the previous bar. And I saw that potentially there is a yellow channel here. So it has one, two, two here. I guess you could count it as one, two, three, four, but I counted as one, two, three, three confirmations. There was a potential trade here, but it is running up close to the highs here. But I thought fail breakouts are probably going to come back, pull back into this trading range because it had a matching breakout here and it kind of made a matching one here. So I'm thinking it's going to make one leg up, potentially a second leg up to try to reach this side. So if you take this entry, it looks like it would have worked out. And this is actually where I take my first trade, but I'm going to explain it, what I was thinking at the time, and then explain in hindsight why it was probably a really bad trade. So I saw this as a higher low. So it's a first entry short, second entry short, failed second entry short, and then it creates a higher low. This is truly a low that is higher than the previous lows. And this is a break of this yellow channel. So I was expecting a test of this high, but I failed to consider that there's not that much room between here and the highs here. So I quickly jumped on, which is early, because I just said, oh, it's confirming the second entry short. This is one leg up. I didn't think it was a measured move yet or was creating a measured move, but this is definitely early because it has two attempts to move up. This signal bar also isn't very good. 
and it's a little bit far from the EMA. So as you can see, I jumped in, it came down, stopped me out. So for a good reason. So it already made one attempt up right here and made a matching high. So I thought, okay, well, that was foolish. And so then it forms this. I saw this, even though the count resets, I saw this as a visual first entry long pullback. Now this is getting ready for a second entry long. What I did like about this one is now it looks like it's going to try a second time to test the highs of this yellow up channel. It's a really strong close. So when this opened down up here, it flashed up, came back down, chopped around. I entered one tick above and then it closed low. Now this isn't the most well thought out trade, but I thought it is bouncing off the EMA. It is at the bottom of the range. I was anticipating that this trade, the idea was correct, but it was definitely early because I was thinking prices still want to move up. And of course then, so I entered here and then if, well, actually this blue arrow is a little deceiving. I actually entered in here. It flashed up and gave me my scalp. I wanted to make sure I got out before I hit this triple test, the potential triple test. And I was able to get out. If you were trying to go for two points, you probably were able to get it. <clears throat> then prices. So this is where I actually take my third trade. So actually, if you see, this is like 635 Pacific Standard, 637 Pacific Standard, 643. So this happened in a span of about under 10 minutes. So I was definitely kind of over trading, probably seeing setups that weren't there. So what I saw here was a new high, say first entry long pullback, second entry long. So when I saw this close, I thought, well, obviously, prices want to move up now. Now, I failed to consider that the highs of this yellow channel has been met right here. And it made a second attempt up and it failed. So when it comes down here, the tendency now is to move back into the trading range, which it is because it's failed breakout here. So suddenly think I'm going to push all the way back through isn't really well confirmed. And I didn't take the big picture consideration that I'm kind of just oscillating and I'm just kind of chopping sideways right now. Yes, it had made one leg up and it's made one, two attempts up and it might make a second attempt up, but this is a little premature. But I saw this as a second entry long and I saw this as a new low, first entry short, second entry short failure potential because it all depends on what this next candle it does. It ticks above, I enter, and then it actually only goes up three ticks. So it never really hit my order. It flashes down and stops me out right here, which is quite unfortunate. Because I was thinking maybe if I had my stop down here below this one, I might survive. But as you can see, if it, even if I did that, move my stop, which is against my rules, I would have gotten stopped out anyways. So this wasn't really the best trade. It was what I thought a good trade at the time because I saw two key entry points. EMA is kind of holding, but EMA is a little sideways. And so unfortunately, I lost that trade. So I red, green, red. And at this point, I said, OK, well, two losses and a green. I'm already two losses down. I just need to sit back. I took too many trades in such a short span of time. I, I know that was going to probably affect me emotionally because I could already feel it. After this loss, I was just, now I was just eager. I was hunting for another trade to try to get back all this loss. Not only was I hunting for another trade, I was thinking of doubling or even tripling my usual lot size, which is incredibly risky because that's a good way to lose money, especially when I'm already on feeling the emotions of going on tilt. So I pretty much just shut it down. I kind of clicked off the, uh, clicked uh, to the simulated account, but I didn't take any trades. I just kind of sat and watched because I was trying to stay more disciplined because I knew if I won some simulated trading accounts, then I would probably feel like I'm back in the groove of things and come back and start trading on the day, which is not a good idea. I needed to kind of follow my rules and come back tomorrow. So the prices continue moving up. It falls into what I think is this green channel. It creates this fail breakout, but I also saw this as a new low. It's a first entry short, second entry short. It's confirmed second entry short. This wasn't a good signal bar. Had this signal bar been red, then I think I might have gotten a trade ready, especially when it flashed down to here. Then definitely I thought, okay, well, here's a trade here. It's a potential break of this green channel, but it's a little early. It did make one leg up, pull back, second leg up. You would have to be basing it off the strength of this trend trading range for things to pull back. And I wasn't too sure. So I did like the strong bearish close. I was thinking and hoping for a lower high down here closer to the EMA. And it flashes down. Now it definitely you feel like you're too late for the trade and it, it continues moving. It never gives you your lower high. You could argue your lower high is here, but this feels like it's a little bit too late. I did see a new high here. 
the first entry long, second entry long potential. You don't have a second entry long confirmed yet, but I thought there's potentially is the first break of the orange down channel. It made one attempt down. It didn't quite do it. It pushed up, and I'm thinking <clears throat> it's a good signal bar, but I just don't like these candles are too large. They're about the same size, so it pushed up, pushed down, almost the same span, actually bigger because it engulfed this previous one. Then it pushed up again, so it's just too congested to really trust anything. So I wanted to definitely skip it. And I also saw this as a new low, so first entry short. Here it creates a second entry short and also a higher low confirming the a second entry long here. But this isn't a good setup. It's what I call, consider an almost setup because as I said, it's con it's kind of congested here. I saw this as a triple test. So definitely if you took a long here, you would have been able to scalp out just barely. It's debatable whether if you would have gotten your one point or not, but it looked like it's having trouble pushing up. So it was a little bit confusing on whether prices would continue moving up or chop sideways some more. Plus this orange channel still is looking for its low. So it's first actually short, pull back. Even though it closed here, it could still push and proceed downwards because it hasn't failed second entry short yet. It technically has failed, but nothing says it couldn't keep moving down. So this was a little confusing. I had to leave it alone. Flashes up. Again, it's just creating kind of like these piano keys side by side, about the same size. Flashes around. Now it kind of moves up this green channel. It almost touches and finally hits, but I don't see a good clean setup. You technically have a new low here. First entry short, second entry short and potentially a failed second entry short, but this is at the top of this trading range. So it's a little bit uh, debatable on whether this is going to push through or not. Plus, it's a little bit hard to see. I had this drawn at one time. I saw this as a potential triple test. It had trouble pushing through this support line. This is the third time now. Yes, it could push through because it definitely was pushing through here. But after this move, they're all creating the same highs. There is a bullish bias because prices are trending up, but I wasn't too keen on this because it stopped just short. It flashed up, came back down. Then I was definitely pretty happy. I didn't try to take a trade here because this is just a really crazy impulse spike. And then of course, then it failed. So if you entered or you were late on the entry, then it's hard to say you would have gotten out safely or not. It's a new high, first entry long, second entry long. It's a good signal bar for second entry long. The only thing, other than the second entry long good signal bar going for it is it might be bouncing off this midline of this range, but that would be dependent on how confident you are on this range. Because if you move this slightly higher, slightly lower, then it's not really bouncing off this midline anymore. So I definitely had to leave it alone. Prices then come down, comes flashing down, creates an overshoot on this side, starts chopping. This is just convoluted. This is just too much congestion. It's a little ugly trading here. It's like new low, first entry short, second entry short, potentially a failure. EMA might be coming into play. It's just hard to trust. You also technically have a new high here. It's a first entry long pullback, second entry long. This is a signal bar to go second entry long, but it's not a very clean signal bar. So definitely nothing here. It starts moving up on this kind of this choppy looking green channel, but it's hard to trust. Then it flashes down. I'm thinking it's one leg down, one attempt up, pullback, another kind of messy looking second leg up now it's pushing back down so i'm watching and waiting to see if it's going to make this measured move stop short of it and it starts reversing so it breaks out of this orange channel technically i'm a new high first entry long you do have a second entry long here and it is a but it's kind of like the first break because it's depending on how you drew it you could say there's a break but there was no close outside so it's kind of just flipped outside and came back in so to trust this second entry long feels very dicey because this is what you see in real time and there's no other, excuse me, there's no other key entry point here to tell you that it's a safe trade. Then it flashes up, kind of chops around, makes a new high here. You only have first entry, you have another first entry. And I thought this is falling into this yellow up channel. Nothing that I particularly like. And then the top of the yellow up channel fits pretty well here. It kind of has this big fail breakout. It's moving back into the range, but this range, the more it trades, the more it feels like it's not as valid anymore. Early on, it was a little bit more valid because it was kind of obeying the bottom side, but now it's kind of breaking below. So it's, it feels hard to trust that this is a guiding trading range at this point. So I'm just kind of switched over to more channels. 
There's a new high here, first entry long. Technically, I have a second entry long, but this is also a terrible signal bar to trust to go long. It is the break of this green down channel, and you are expecting prices to come up and test. So it could be one leg up, and then it could be pulling back to create a second leg. I drew this orange channel, and here, this is a break of this yellow channel. So you're expecting a push and test of this high, but it's also a break of this green channel. It made one attempt down. This could be argued as a second attempt down. It looked like it failed. So this is very tight trading, but I was thinking this is a potential trade because you have a new high here. It's first entry long, second entry long. You haven't have a confirmed second entry long, but what I liked about this is it is kind of hugging this bottom of this orange channel. And this is the dominant trend line at the moment. It already made a two-legged correction, one leg down, pull back, second leg down. So it's one push up, pull back. It could be starting a second push up. Granted, you think the green one is in play, but I counted as already one attempt, second attempt, and now it's starting to move up. On top of that, this is a very small candle. It's only five ticks of risk. So if I were to enter this, I would probably try to enter at the top of here, and then my risk or my exit would be below this signal bar. It looked like it would have worked. The prices continue moving up. It kind of falls into this orange channel, makes one leg down, first break, one attempt up to test this high. And then it doesn't try to make a second attempt till about right here, and it pushes up and through. So here, it met the move of this yellow up channel, and here it made completed the test of the highs of this orange channel. So now I'm just watching. It breaks out of this pre-market highs and lows, but I don't see any clean entries because you could say this is a new low. It's a first entry short, and then you technically have a second entry short here, but you could already tell the bias is now very bullish. So you'd be counter trend trading. It's a good signal bar, but it just feels too dicey. The prices continue moving up. You only have a first entry long. You have another first entry long. You technically have a second entry long, but I don't like that it's below the EMA. EMA previously wasn't as important because it's just chopping sideways, but now EMA might be coming into play because it's acting as a somewhat of a support because prices are hanging out higher above the EMA than it is below. So even though you're thinking it could push back through, it had this overshoot, had an overshoot here, create another overshoot here. It's it's debatable whether you know the downtrend has, you know, it went and tested the lows, but I just didn't like the looks of this candle. I wanted this to actually close closer and ideally above the EMA than I feel first entry long, second entry long, feel more confident. And if you did take the trade, you'd be kind of sitting in this noise until finally comes out and rescues you. And I just, I'm glad I didn't take that because I don't like sitting in this type of noise. The prices continue moving up. It falls into what I think is this trading range again. There's no clean entry. It's the first entry long here. Technically, you have a second entry long right here, but this is a very bad signal bar to even consider taking a second entry. Then if you wait for the trick bar to close, it's not very convincing either. Plus, you're already running into the high of the day, which was, which was this blue one that is spiked up and potentially the top of this resistance. Then it just kind of chops sideways. It gets noisy again. Technically, you have a new low here, first entry short. You have your second entry short right here and then a better second entry short here. So you can see it as one leg up, pull back, maybe a second leg up. But if the setup just wasn't clean enough for me, then prices continue moving. It pushes up, it creates a new high, new high of the day for sure. It's a first entry long. Actually, you don't have a first entry long until you get about here. So this is just three matching tops. This is a first entry long. And then you technically have a second entry long here, but it fails. So it is a break of this orange channel. It made and kind of, you're thinking maybe it's going to come back down and test. I'm not too fond of this doji candle, but there's only a first entry short. So you have a first entry long. You're not thinking of going long yet because it, this doesn't have any clear indication or any hint that you should be going long. Here, if you went long, you probably would have gotten stopped out. So you could say there's a failed second entry long. And I thought about that, but I thought there is some kind of support that's coming into play here. So I'd be kind of selling into support, which feels a little dicey. Yes, it wants to test the lows of this orange channel, but keep in mind, all the previous price action has been pushing up. Now it's kind of consolidating. It's a little unclear to me whether it's going to go long or short. You could argue that maybe it's moving back into this trading range and it had this fail breakout here, but the fail breakout kind of dwelled outside for quite a bit of time. 
So I wasn't quite convinced to extend it all the way out to here because I thought it was more valid. This trading range was more valid back here. And here, it's just getting a little iffy. So nevertheless, if you saw it as a failed second entry long and you had your entry down here, looks like you might have gotten a quick scalp. But here, then you would have been wondering, because I think the stop would have been up here. You probably would have gotten stopped out if you didn't get it get out early. And it continues chopping, and it's kind of moving toward the last 30 minutes, and it's getting really tight trading again. I was thinking maybe there's some kind of really shallow trend channel here, but I wasn't liking this all that much because it doesn't really tell you too much, and it's getting too late in the day to try to look for a setup. This last 10 minutes, and again, it gets really tight trading, and it goes into the close. So overall, I would say most of the setups were earlier in the day. I got a little too eager too early in the day. This is all within the first, I would say, 20 minutes. And I already took two losses and won one. So it was better that I just you know, sat through it. And even when I sat through this, there wasn't that many clean setups that I particularly liked or felt safe. And as you can see, I didn't even take the trades that I thought was safe, which just might have been like this one. But other than that, everything was just a little choppy. Kind of reminded me of the uh, few days before yesterday where it was kind of dry with the trading. So hopefully that was helpful.